If you've got a 3D printer, you can choose between hundreds of different filaments with all kinds of different properties. From tough as nails to fluffy as a cloud, rock solid to floppier than a rubber band. I've tried over 300 filaments so far, but which ones should you have in your workshop? Let's sort the cash from the trash and find the spools that rule today at Voidstar Lab. Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, this was supposed to be the grand finale to my every filament series, but somewhere between the cannabis scented TPU, the radiation blocking PETG, and the PLA mixed with crushed up Wimbledon tennis courts, I had an epiphany. The weirdest, rarest filaments ever conceived by humankind are probably not in the running for your next project. So I sifted through those filaments to find the most popular, iconic, and useful 3D printing materials that every maker should know about. And I graded them on this tier list, which itself is 3D printed. At the top is S tier. If at all possible, you should design your project specifically to use one of these filaments. That's how good they are. At the bottom is F tier. They suck so fundamentally, none of these are even worth considering. In between are tiers A, B, and C. And the wider a variety of projects filament makes possible, and the more its pros outweigh its cons, the higher rank it gets. This five-fold filament free-for-all is sponsored by Aura, your ally against the reptilian corporations selling your docs to any scumbag with a credit card. I googled myself the other night. Don't judge me, everyone does it. You know what I found? My wife, my phone number, even my wife's phone number. I'm sorry, folks, she's taken. But a whole 35 years of our personal info, email addresses, and even real addresses were all there for the buying. We don't share this stuff. Our cell carriers, banks, and basically every company we've ever done business with sold us out to data brokers. We got lucky. This could have included health records, wages, even family trees. Some of these so-called personal data were even outright lies. I have never been to court. I hide all the witnesses in my chest freezer. But if someone coughed up 95 cents, these bogus court filings might as well be real. Here in the US, it's your right to tell a data broker, no, you can't sell my phone number to stalkers, and they are legally required to purge your info. But there are thousands of these psychos who could find them all, file all those documents, and keep checking in case they just put your data back up. Or I can. Aura automatically bombards data brokers with opt-out requests on your behalf. They can watch your credit score, identity usage, and your house's title. They can even notify you when your data appear on the dark web. You get the whole schmear plus an antivirus password manager and VPN for one single low rate. So who is selling your secrets? Visit Aura.com slash Zach Friedman for a free two-week trial. Take yourself off the market at the link in the description. I put it there along with all the printable STLs for the tier list. I had to put them up myself. If I didn't have Aura, I could have just waited for someone else to leak them for me. Anyways, let's print some boats! Without further ado, the reigning king of additive manufacturing, PLA. Polylactic acid is super easy to print, it's dirt cheap, and you can buy it anywhere in more colors than your tasteless retinas deserve. PLA prints extremely fast, it excels at bridges and overhangs, and if your settings are good, it's really easy to detach it from supports. PLA is just good at getting what's on screen into the real world. It's also the stiffest non-composite thermoplastic and has excellent tensile strength. It's a lot more rugged than you'd think a filament that cheap should be be. Just be aware, if you weigh it down, over tighten a screw, or otherwise put a consistent load on it, PLA will slowly but permanently creep out of shape. PLA's ease of use, low cost, and solid performance make it the first choice for pretty much every job, but I'm still going to put it in A tier. The fact is, it just can't stand up to the real world. It softens on a hot day, just gets ranched by the sun's ultraviolet light, and shatters when you drop it. You also can't really sand, glue, paint, or otherwise touch it up after printing. Now there are ways to improve on perfection, and this next filament is not one of them. Silk PLA has a special additive that makes your prints cartoonishly shiny. This stuff is more metallic than actual metal. This weakens the print, but it makes supports a lot easier to remove, and since Silk PLA literally shines in show pieces, I think this is a fair trade. But just keep an eye on your printer. When Silk PLA heats up, it puffs up like popcorn. So if your extruder fan is sucking hot air, or you're doing multi-material single nozzle prints, Silk PLA can easily give your extruder a monster mamma jam. Silk PLA sacrifices performance for aesthetics, but in its defense, those aesthetics are really aesthetic. Because Silk PLA will absolutely trash both a Bamboo AMS and a Prusa MMU, I'm gonna put it in B tier. 
B for by Prusha and Bamboo Labs, the two genders. Our next filament is our first composite, carbon fiber PLA. CF is a common additive in all kinds of materials, but this isn't the sexy weave that soups up street racers. These fibers have to be chopped short or even ground to powder to fit through the nozzle. Carbon fiber won't make your print any stronger or lighter, but it does sharpen details, it stabilizes the filament as it cools, and it makes the end product stiffer but more brittle. This wombo combo of crisp details, low shrinkage, and matte finish makes CFPLA one of the best looking, most accurate filaments you can print with. Really the only reasons to use vanilla PLA are to avoid having to install a hardened steel nozzle and to get different colors. Neither of these are valid because a nozzle swap is easy and cheap and black is the color code of cool. That's why the cast iron skillet is the coolest skillet. I'm gonna put CFPLA in S tier for skillet. So stupid. <laughs> S for stupid. <laughs> so what about a composite with metal? Infusing your prints with metal shavings makes them satisfyingly hefty and adds a little bit of their properties. Copper will develop a green patina, stainless steel can be polished, iron is magnetic, you get the idea. The metal doesn't make the filament any stronger. The stuff is actually significantly weaker than vanilla. Unfortunately, metal-filled filaments are extremely brittle on and off the spool, and they are crazy expensive. You pay far more per gram, and because the filament is so high density, you get fewer prints per program. Uh, anything these can do, you could do better with a regular filament and a coat of paint, some inserts, or even some electroplating. I'm going to put the entire category of metal composites in F. Our next filament is even less useful, but it's way more charming. Wood PLA. This is plastic plus sawdust, and your mileage will vary. Crappy wood PLA has such finely powdered plant product, it's just regular PLA but brown and worse. Quality wood PLA has visible chips and that's the kind I'm talking about here. Wood PLA is not very pleasant to print, it spurts and sputters, especially after absorbing humidity, which it does very easily. The end product is also a lot weaker, but the soft springy surface really does feel like hardwood and while it doesn't really look the part if you hit it with some varnish, the wood grain effect is surprisingly convincing. The lower quality the print, the more convincing the effect. I'm going to put wood PLA in B tier, B for bamboo, which is the most common wood in wood filament, even though it's a grass, false advertising, where's the f***ing SEC? These are PLA alloys, PLA improved by mixing in another type of plastic. These are sold under a wide variety of meaningless overlapping and confusing names like PLA Pro, PLA Plus, Rugged PLA, and just infinite more. There are three main formulas. I'm going to call the first kind tough PLA, remember I don't mean spools labeled tough PLA. What I'm talking about is a combination of PLA and polybutylene terephthalate or PBT. If you're a mechanical keyboard nerd, you have probably seen PBT keycaps. They're incredibly tough and slightly flexible, which is a great set of properties for covering PLA's weaknesses. This Wombo Combo prints and acts just like PLA, except it resists higher temperatures, handles sharper impacts, and it won't shatter when it's overloaded. Tough PLA is a solid S tier, just a straight upgrade and a superior choice for pretty much every light duty project. The second kind is matte PLA. This is actually a composite, but unlike nozzle destroying crap shards, this additive is some kind of plant pulp. The soft fibers give your prints a springy satin surface and even makes them sound soft. This stuff can be dropped, struck, and unlike other PLAs, sanded, painted, and carved. But this absorbs humidity faster and it's much more likely to jam and grind in the extruder. This is also a semi-flexible filament, which is just not what you're looking for for many projects. I'm gonna put matte PLA in B tier because it's more of a situational side grade to regular PLA. The third is high speed PLA, a dubious name for what's a genuinely useful filament. You can run regular PLA pretty quick, but above 300 millimeters a second, you just can't force enough pure PLA through the hot end to keep up with the motion system. High speed PLA melts at a lower temperature and has a reduced viscosity, so you can crank that hog to table wobbling turbo speed. Considering how little heat it takes to soften normal PLA, this can be a real problem in hot climates. Still, I'm going to put high speed PLA in S tier. S for speed. There is just nothing more important than finishing projects faster. A few hours can make all the difference. Of course, you only get those hours if regular PLA is holding your printer back from rolling around at the speed of sound, got places to go, got a folly or rainbow. Rainbows are arcs, arcs are bent, and you can bend flex PLA. S tier segue. I'm including this for historical reasons. 
reasons, because Flex PLA has nothing to do with PLA. It's MakerBot's inexplicable brand name for polycaprolactone. This stuff doesn't normally look this crappy. This sample was donated by Ren from our Discord after sitting in their closet for like nine years. Here's what a brand new spool of PCL prints like. PCL is the second lowest temperature material on this list. It prints at only 100 Celsius and softens in a warm bath. This stuff has a translucent waxy consistency that no adhesive will ever stick to. In fact, you can use PCL as an adhesive. ShapeLock, Instamorph, and other sculptable plastics are just pellets of PCL. This filament is particularly useful for prosthetics because you can use a hair dryer to contour a model to fit the wearer even while they're still wearing it. PCL's ridiculous low temperatures can be genuinely hard to print, but I'm still gonna put it in B tier because where it's good, it's downright life-changing. Next up is PETG, and this is the opposite. Supremely versatile, never really exceptional. This stuff is a little bit harder to print than PLA, but it's tougher, it handles higher temperatures, and it generally survives a lot more real-world punishment. PETG is also one of the most transparent polymers and has one of the lowest coefficients of friction. You can get clear, slicker filaments, but they are way harder to print. PETG does have problems, especially when it comes to overhangs. Bridges will just sag like crazy and supports won't release. It's not very difficult to design around this, but if you're mostly printing other people's models, PETG can cause more harm than good. It also absorbs water pretty fast, so the more humid your climate, the faster you want to finish a spool. PETG belongs in A tier, a step up from PLA. Now add some carbon and you are really cooking. Carbon fibers stabilize molten filament and PETG's biggest weakness is how it sags and warps as it prints. CFPETG is a major step up in stability and support quality, plus the fibers stiffen what's otherwise a pretty bendy polymer. Polyester tends to have shiny walls, so every CFPETG print looks glorious. CFPETG deserves a spot in S tier. It is almost always the ideal choice for functional prototypes. I wouldn't say it's exceptional at anything, but it's very, very good at everything that matters. But allow me to introduce PETG's younger, better brother, polycyclohexylene dimethylene terephthalate, comma, glycol modified. Everything PETG does well, PCTG does better. Everywhere PETG fails, PCTG is like mildly inconvenient. This stuff takes an insane beating, it gets waterlogged a third as quickly, and it is one of the easiest filaments to print. No warping, minimal sagging, and almost perfect layer adhesion for consistently strong prints in all directions. PCTG gets the top of S tier because it's as close as you can get to a perfect filament. Really, its only downsides are supports are hard to remove, it's expensive, and it's really hard to find, which is probably what makes it expensive. I truly cannot comprehend why the market hasn't caught up yet. I suspect it's only a matter of time. That last letter, the glycol, makes the polymer more flexible and easy to print. But if you want to play in hard mode, hard as in challenging and as in stiff, you can leave the plasticizer out. The result is PET, also called BPET for bottle grade and HTPET for high temperature. This filament prints at 275 degrees minimum, ideally over 300. Compared to PETG, PET is stiffer, tougher, shinier, and absolutely devastating to bare glass and PEI. And of course, crazy resistant dye temperatures. It's basically super PETG. It shares PETG's problems with overhangs, warping, and humidity, except they're even worse. That said, it's easier and cheaper to print PET than other high-powered engineering filaments like nylon and polycarbonate. So I'm going to put PET in high B tier. It's got power, but you will suffer for it. Remember how carbon fiber made PETG better? Well, CFPET is way, way, way better. It's almost as easy to print as entry-level PETG, and it's extremely stiff. I use this for the arm on my heads-up display to lock the optics in place. It won't flex, so, you know, it doesn't wobble. There aren't very many suppliers for this stuff, so spools like this one from Bamboo Lab tend to get pretty pricey. Still, I think this filament deserves the A tier simply by being one of the easiest to use high performance polymers. If your printer has an airtight enclosure and the nozzle can get hellaciously hot, you owe it to yourself to try this material. Our next filament is not PLA, it's not PETG, but it prints like the former, works like the latter, and packs a secret power of its own. This is polyvinyl butyrate. PVB is weaker than PETG on paper, but since it's slightly more flexible, I found it performs equally well in real life. PVB, a lot like yours truly, reveals its true colors when exposed to alcohol. 
alcohol. Isopropanol melts the layers together and fuses the surface into a slick liquid sheen. But that hoist petard has two edges. When you swab your plate with alcohol, it doesn't disappear, it stays in the air. So now my entire spool of PVB is fused together. PVB gets the PVB tier. Luckily, vapor smoothing isn't unique to PVB. You can also do it with ABS. Acrylonitrile butyrostyrene is ubiquitous in consumer products like toys, gadgets, and until very recently, 3D printing. You can run this stuff amazingly fast, and since it dissolves in acetone, you can solvent weld it and use a vapor chamber to get a seamless surface. ABS is cheap, it withstands some pretty impressive temperatures and a lot of punishment. It is crazy tough. But ABS has two massive weaknesses, and if you're still listening, you probably already know them. I'll make it quick. It warps like crazy and it rakes. You don't truly need an enclosure to print ABS. It's a bit overblown, but you really want one. ABS is at its best for outdoor prints. It doesn't get too brittle in winter, it doesn't turn to taffy in the summer, and while it's not totally resistant to the sun's ultraviolet rays, it can taint them for most of a decade. But I'm putting ABS in C tier, because if you want these properties, you actually have a better option in the form of ASA. Acrylonitrile styrene acrylate is a chemical cousin of ABS, but its upsides are upper and its caveats just less concave. ASA withstands heat all the way to the boiling point and can survive indefinitely in direct sunlight. It's also just as tough as ABS and has a really handsome matte surface. Molten ASA is also one of the least viscous of all the polymers, so if you're trying to set speedboat records, this is the filament of champions. It's not easy to print per se, but it does warp a lot less. It still off-gasses just as much filthy effluvia, so, you know, wear a snorkel. It's a bit of a bitch to print, but if your project needs to take a beating, it's a really good choice. I'll put ASA in A tier. High impact polystyrene is similar to ABS, but a bit softer, more waxy, and slightly flexible. As the name implies, HIPS can take some punishment, and combined with its low density, it works great in wearable devices and props. You'll usually find the stuff sold as a support material for ASA or ABS. The solvent limonene will attack HIPS, but won't affect other styrenes. Still, HIPS is a useful material in its own right, so I'm gonna put it in B tier. We're now entering the pain in the ass engineering polymer territory. These are tricky to print and they need fancy printers, but if you're a working pro or serious nerd, sooner or later you're gonna need their strength. Let's start with the quintessential engineering filament, nylon or polyamide. This actually refers to a whole family of plastics, and the most popular for printing are PA6 and PA12. We'll start with the former, which is the more popular of the two by a huge margin. PA6 nylon deserves its role as the go-to heavy-duty filament. Its exceptional strength, super-powered layer bonds, and high flexibility make PA6 prints nigh immortal. This stuff stays stable at a higher heat than even ABS, and since it's so slippery, nylon mechanisms will run smoother for longer. That said, it's such an astronomical pain in the ass to print, high-end machines are literally designed around its problems. Nylon is so aggressively hygroscopic, a reel can get completely waterlogged before a print can even finish. A dehydrator and a heated dry box are absolutely mandatory. Just don't get carried away. If you dry nylon too much, it'll get brittle and spontaneously crumble. Also, nylon warps like crazy. A sealed enclosure can help, but you really want an actively heated chamber. Even if the first layer stays on the plate, nylon warps with such force it can rip the plate right off the bed. Because your prints will only be as good as your printer and your patients, PA6 nylon goes in B tier. But sometimes you really need to crank the heat. You want PA12 nylon. This stuff prints way hotter, usually around 300 Celsius, and since it warps even harder than PA6, a hot box is an absolute requirement. PA12 is stiffer than PA6, so it's better for cars, RC vehicles, machine tools, and other heavy duty but precision jobs. Remember, rigid means brittle, so as durable as PA12 is, it's still easier to break than PA6. I'm gonna put PA12 in B tier. It's got advantages over PA6, but since it's more expensive and harder to print, you're usually better off with its less carbonated cousin. Carbon fiber can seriously improve nylon's performance, but unless you're using a real fancy pants printer, 
The difference just is not there. Carbon fiber nylon, usually called PACF, is stiffer than vanilla and warps a lot less. But even 80% less warping is a shitload of warping. You also sacrifice nylon's low friction and you need an insanely powerful hot end to preserve those high powered layer bonds. This Pantheon HS3 is so overbuilt specifically because it's meant to print CF nylon at high speed. You need a powerful drive motor to force the filament in, fire breathing hot end to get it out, and a powerful gantry just to whip all that around. I'm gonna put PA6 CF in B tier and PA12 CF in C tier. That said, if you want a seriously strong, far friendlier filament, especially if you have an expense account, you want PAGF. Glass-filled nylon is one of the modern world's most important materials. From chainsaws to handguns, a huge variety of heavy-duty gizmos are made practical and inexpensive by injection molding this exact same material. Compared to pure nylon, GFPA is massively stiffer, tougher, and more resistant to heat, abrasion, and impact. The glass fibers reinforce nylon strength and they cut warping to the point that this is actually a fairly easy filament to print. Glass fibers are extremely abrasive and they drive up the print temperature. You really want a tungsten carbide or gemstone tip plus abrasion resistant drive gears. But with the right settings, GF is a pleasure to print while being so durable, it's a viable alternative to machined aluminum. I'm gonna put glass filled nylon in S tier. This is high end stuff that calls for a high end printer, but if you need this level of high end performance, you can probably afford it. Let's get back to my comfort zone with nylon PET alloys. When you hear tough PETG or low temperature nylon, this is probably what you're in for. These combos of polyamide and polyester are pitched as a step up from PETG or a way to print nylon on a lower end printer. But while you get a bit of nylon strength, you get a lot of its weaknesses. PETG and nylon both like to peel off the plate, and by their powers combined, your prints will become the tacos they always knew they were. Nylon polyester blends belong in C tier, because 99% of the time you're better off just picking a side. Next up, PC, not political correctness, polycarbonate. Although if there is a politically correct filament, I definitely want it for that every filament episode. With bulletproof toughness and a glass-like sheen, this is literally bulletproof glass. Printed polycarbonate won't actually resist small arms, but it is one of the toughest, stiffest filaments, and if you do break it, it doesn't shatter like PLA. Polycarbonate gulps up moisture almost as thirstily as nylon, and it is one of the slowest printing filaments. It also prints hotter than 300 Celsius, but once it sets, you have to heat the model to almost 150 degrees before it starts to soften. I'm going to put polycarbonate in B tier. It is the beefiest standard filament, but those numbers can be real overkill. It's just too much work for what's usually a gratuitous upgrade. Adding carbon fiber to polycarbonate amps up that stiffness to record setting levels, so you can make prints that barely flex, even when they're loaded with hundreds of kilos. But unless your printer feeds the reel directly into the extruder, CFPC's stiffness and roughness can easily overload a drive motor and stall out the entire system. This stuff isn't as useful in general as other composites or even polycarbonates, but I'm still gonna put it in A tier. Extreme stiffness is just a really useful property, and in your mother's opinion, feels incredibly good. Also like your mom, CFPC is surprisingly cheap. This reel of Pryline Super Hard PC is barely 60 bucks kilo on Amazon. Polycarbonate is also crystal clear. In fact, the only thermoplastic with better optics is our next filament, PMMA. Polymethyl methacrylate, also known as acrylic, plexiglass, perspex, lucite, and like a thousand other brand names, is almost always sold by the sheet. But even in filament form, PMMA's clarity is truly incomparable. You can even buff it to a frosted or polished surface. Since it has great resistance to UV, acrylic can even shine in direct sunlight. Unfortunately, PMMA sucks as a filament. It has terrible bed adhesion, crappy layer adhesion, and high thermal expansion, so prints are likely to fail during or even after the printing process. It's also extremely brittle and absorbs water super aggressively while taking a very long time to dehydrate. It's a terrible filament, but it looks really, really gorgeous. It's not that expensive, and compared to other outdoor filaments, it's not actually that demanding. I'm gonna put PMMA in C tier, C for clear. Every non-transparent PMMA gets an F because I truly do not know why these exist. Our next one is a sneak peek from the upcoming Exotic Filaments episode. PCPBT, an alloy of polycarbonate and the same easy to print biopolymer that puts a plus in roughly a third of PLA. With a print temperature of only 260 Celsius, 
Celsius, superior surface quality, and super low warping. This isn't just the easiest polycarbonate I've ever used, it's one of the easiest filaments. It even opens up an entire new class of projects. PBT flassifies the polycarbonate, but it preserves its strength and shatter resistance far below the freezing point. That makes PCPBT one of very few filaments that won't get brittle in the cold. Its durability, ease of printing, and low price put PCPBT in A tier. A for Arctic. But when it comes to special properties, the next one takes the cake. This stuff lets you squirt out half millimeter layers with a 1.6 millimeter nozzle at only 33 degrees Celsius. That can slash print times by two thirds and it doesn't need cooling fans, an enclosure, or even a heated bed. This material is 100% plant-based, so biodegradable you can literally eat your prints. Chocolate is the only printable and edible thermoplastic currently on the market, and I'd like to put it in C tier because chocolate starts with a C. Unfortunately, uh, it's disqualified. It comes in candlelight cocoa cores, and this is a filament tier list. I guess I'll just have to put this banshee somewhere else. Speaking of gimmicks, let's loosen up with some funky flexibles. The difficulty of printing a flexible filament and its practicality for projects depends on your printer. In other words, take these ratings with a grain of salt. Let's start with the flexible filament most people think about when they think about flexible filament, TPU. Thermoplastic polyurethane is tough, it's cheap, and you can get it in countless colors and hardnesses. This stuff also permanently bonds to most build surfaces, so use a glue stick or face its wrath. All TPU absorbs water like crazy and it only prints properly when it's dry, so a dehydrator and possibly a dry box are mandatory. It is otherwise really easy to print and you can actually use supports. 99D TPU is harder than a skateboard wheel. It's basically rigid. Why would you want an inflexible flexible filament? Well, TPU actually has two more superpowers, perfect layer adhesion and outright immunity to shattering. So this gimmick material is basically indestructible. TPU is the definitive choice for combat robots, tactical gear, and similar rough and tumble full contact situations that would push other materials past the breaking point. The sheer durability and versatility of high durometer TPU and how little money and skill you need to get it, sends it directly to S tier. ADD durometer isn't soft per se, but it's also not stiff. It's as rigid as the sole of a running shoe and a good balance for things like bumpers, hinges, and semi-legal nerf melee weapons. It's also just as easy to print, as long as you don't try to make anything tall and thin. I'm gonna give semi-flexible TPU a B since it's trickier to print and it's too stiff for many projects, but too supple for others. ADA durometer TPU is about the softest you can get. This is unambiguously a floppy flexible filament. This has a nasty habit of tying itself around your drive gear, so you have to maintain constant low speed and keep an eye on the printer. I don't really like this stuff. It seems like the obvious choice for wearables, but since TPU doesn't breathe, it instantly gets really sweaty and uncomfortable. I'm gonna put low durometer TPU in C tier. Technically, TPU is a type of thermoplastic elastomer, but when people say TPE filament, they're usually referring to a material that's both flexible and stretchy. This means your extruder's drive gears can squash TPE filament flat. You have to turn up your extrusion multiplier, but it's really hard to predict how much. It also doesn't help that TPE pours out of the nozzle like a runny fluid, so prints in this material usually end up looking more like this. F in chat, TPE in F. If you still want that stretch, rejoice, for technology has marched on. This is styrene ethylene butyrene styrene, a form of TPE enhanced with the same chemical that makes ABS perform really well and also smell really bad. SEBS inherits the weaknesses of both TPE and ABS. It's extremely hygroscopic and it releases stinky styrene fumes. It also softens at a very low temperature, so be careful when you dehydrate it or you might ruin the spool. SEBS prints smoothly and consistently, but because different extruders compress the filament in different ways, you have to dial it in by hand once per printer. But take one look at this print and you will know SEBS is absolutely worth the effort. The fact that a filament can be this flexible, stretchy, and smooth to print is truly astounding. It's not a stretch to put Seb's high atop the A tier. This is all getting too positive. Let's regenerate our cynicism with the uniquely obnoxious polypropylene. PP isn't just a funny pair of letters. It can bend without taking damage, it's extremely rugged, and it's phenomenal layer adhesion and tensile strength make even single wall vase prints effectively invincible. It's also the lowest density filament, so prints feel feather light and you get like 30% more filament per kilo. But polypropylene does not appreciate being printed. First, PP has some of the worst bed adhesion. Then polypropylene is more 
curly than a Three Stooge, and the warping actually gets worse when it cools. Light TPU PP has perfect layer adhesion, but it's so much tougher it makes supports impossible to remove. At 40D durometer, this PP is far softer than any TPU, so you can't make the most of its strength. I'm sticking my PP in F tier. That said, Polypropylene composites are f***ing spiffy. Glass-filled PP is a standard material for industrial machinery, so unlike other polymers, glass is more common than carbon. This stuff is even more difficult to print than regular. It peels off the bed easier, it curls more aggressively, and it demands a direct drive extruder, hardened nozzle, and an enclosure. But the payoff is bananas, as GFPP is one of the toughest, most durable all-weather filaments you can run on a mid-range printer. It's also unnervingly lightweight, and you get a ton of filament per spool. I'll put GFPP in B tier. It is unbelievably obnoxious, but also unbelievably tough. Olive and block copolymers are fairly new arrival to hobbyist printing, and they promise to fuse PP's toughness and PETG's versatility. OBC is semi-flexible, it warps a lot less, and it can use supports, but since it is still a polyolefin like polypropylene, getting and keeping it on the bed is nearly impossible. I'm going to put OBC in C tier. Its rigidity and stability do make it more useful than the classic PP, but it's way more expensive and can really only be printed on a purpose-made build surface. I haven't found a glass-filled OBC, but I would love to try it. High-density polyethylene is one of the most popular plastics. Most bottles, jugs, and buckets are made of this stuff, and it is the most recycled polymer by far. This is the worst filament. In every way, a filament can suck. HDPE sets a new low. It is impossible to overstate how desperately HDPE wants to warp, pry itself off the bed, split layer lines, and generally exact its vengeance for the crime of trying to print with it. This gets the effiest F. HDPE's only role is purging the extruder when you switch between high and low temperature filaments. HDPE's bed adhesion is one of the worst, but if you want the absolute worst, you want polyoxymethylene, aka acetyl or delrin. I don't know why you would actually want that, but here you go. Every CNC user is familiar with POM. It's this cheap, usually icy white resin that's super stiff, super easy to machine, and has a remarkably low coefficient of friction. Palm has literally zero bed adhesion. You have to glue a wooden board or a sheet of rough paper to your bed and lay down the first layer so aggressively it embeds itself into the fibers, like it needs a mechanical connection to stay on the bed. Palm's layers really want to split apart, so you have to heat the enclosure and go as slow as possible. There are two more giant problems with Palm. Anything it can do, nylon can do cheaper and easier. Second, if Palm gets a little bit too hot, it degrades into the corpse-preserving cancer-causing toxin they call formaldehyde. The name polyoxymethylene is actually a euphemism because polyformaldehyde sounds too scary. For that reason alone, I'm going to put Palm in F tier. F for formaldehyde. But it's not the most toxic filament. Not even close. Polyvinylidene fluoride, aka Kynar, is a chemical cousin of Teflon. PVDF filament is as easy to print as PETG, but it's way tougher, it's way more durable, and it boasts extreme resistance to heat, friction, and abrasion. It's also absolutely hydrophobic, so it never needs to be dehydrated. PVDF's headline feature is its chemical resistance. This is immune to almost every solvent and reagent known to science, including seriously scary stuff like halogenated hydrocarbons and inorganic acids. I don't know what the f*** those are. If there's a chemist watching, that chemist should really leave a comment. PVDF is pretty expensive, but other than that, it's in all respects the perfect filament. However, if your hot end gets a few dozen degrees too spicy, PVDF decomposes into a cornucopia of the world's most terrifying chemicals. Carbon monoxide, hydrogen cyanide, and hydrofluoric acid are only a few ingredients in the toxic death cloud that will form around your extruder. If PVDF couldn't decompose into acid that passes through your skin to dissolve your bones, it would get a double S plus rank of its very own. But it does, so it goes in F. Second best won't dissolve your bones. So suppose you prefer your bones undissolved, but you still want to dip your print in boiling aqua regia while hitting it with a sledgehammer. I won't kink shame. What you want is a super polymer, and we'll start with the best known and best performing of the bunch, Peak. 
Polyether ether ketone has mechanical, thermal, and chemical properties so far beyond those of any conventional plastic, it's more of an alternative to steel. It's nearly twice as tough as the toughest polycarbonate. It's so rugged, it's used in like missiles, literally rocket science. Even if you blast this with a torch point blank, it'll extinguish itself as it breaks down into non-toxic byproducts. It resists chemicals that are so aggressive, a villain would slowly lower James Bond into a vat of them. Peak is the single strongest, stiffest, toughest printable plastic, and there's nothing out there that even comes close. You could say it gives you peak performance. Brooke just face palms so hard you could probably hear it. There are a few caveats, teeny weeny little caveats. Peak costs $700 a kilo. Uh, also, it prints 400 degrees Celsius. That's about 100 degrees hotter than a soldering iron. That is hot enough to anneal steel, i.e. f*** you, unhardens your nozzle. It also needs a 140 degree chamber, which are conditions so brutal, half that heat would destroy all the bearings and fans in an ordinary printer. Peak hoovers up water like, I don't have a really good, uh, really good metaphor there. You even need a special bed adhesive, because at 145 Celsius, the plate will cook everything else. After all that, peak warps, curls, falls off the plate, and is generally a bastard to print. I'm gonna put peak in C tier, because even though it's the best at pretty much everything, it's so gratuitously off the charts, you don't really have a reason to pay that much money and deal with all that bullshit. If you can concede on one or more of those stats, another super polymer will give you a much bigger bang for your buck. Peak example, Peak's little sister, Peck. Peck. Polyether ketone ketone is the same chemical building blocks as Peak, just in different proportions. Its mechanical properties are all worse, but compared to regular filaments, still off the charts. Peck, like Peak, demands a lot of your printer, but once you pass the gear check, this is one of the easiest polymers to print full stop. My tool changer doesn't have a heated chamber, but I still managed to nail this beautiful benchy on the first try. I think Peck deserves the A tier. Even though Peak beats it on paper, a Peck print is almost as strong and it's far more likely to succeed. But if you're in this for the chemical resistance, you can get literally the best and save a fortune with PPS. When it comes to strength, polyphenylene sulfide barely meets or beats polycarbonate. But when chemicals are involved, PPS is the undisputed champ. To the best of our knowledge, there is nothing on the planet capable of dissolving or reacting with this material below 200 Celsius. At 200 bucks a kilo, the stuff is expensive but still within reach of hobbyists. And its print parameters, 325 degree nozzle, 140 degree plate, are also practical for a diehard nerd. I'm gonna put PPS in C tier. If you're working with boiling beakers of caustic chemicals, it's a good thing it costs less because you'll need to save a few bucks for life insurance. P PSU, polysulfone, not power supply unit, is the weakest super polymer, with mechanical properties about the same as PA6 nylon. But PSU's glass transition temperature is an astronomical 187 degrees Celsius, and it keeps its strength almost the whole way there. You can literally print a nozzle out of PSU and use it to print PLA. It also shrugs off water, radiation, and chemicals, and when you combine that with the heat resistance, you can sterilize PSU as if it were surgical steel. I'm gonna put PSU high in the B tier. Nylon is almost always gonna be a better choice, but PSU opens all kinds of new frontiers in citizen science. Somewhere between peak and PSU sit polyether sulfone and polyphenyl sulfone. PES and PPSU are exceptionally rugged, they can hold their shape over 200 degrees, and they stand up to fire, chemicals, radiation. Look, I don't even know why I'm talking about them. Like, you people are not seriously deciding between peak PPSU and PSU. I'm just gonna throw these at the tier list and let God rank them. You can actually get most super polymers in carbon or glass filled flavors. Since these polymers are already so stiff, the additive mainly reduces warping and makes your prints look less like solidified urine. Very few printers can actually feed such a stiff rough filament, and nozzles that can resist both extreme abrasion and extreme temperatures are crazy expensive. This CF Peak Benchy is standing in for all super polymer composites, and I'm gonna put it in C tier. Super polymers may be the dark souls of filaments, but our final three are the dwarf fortresses of filaments. You know what's really weird? You probably already own them. 
Meet polyetheramide or PEI. That's right, the tough heat proof surface coating every spring steel bed gets its time to shine on the other side of the nozzle. PEI aka Ultem is sold in two grades, 1010 and 9085. Th there's no reason to use 9085, so I'm just gonna put it straight in F tier. If you're gonna spend 400 bucks on a single reel of filament, you deserve the good stuff. Ultem 1010's flexural strength is the second stiffest after peak. Its tensile strength makes it the second strongest. After peak, its glass transition temperature is 217 Celsius, making it the second most heat proof after our next one. Ultim might not set records, but it is incredibly solid at literally everything. You can blast it with electricity, hose it with chemicals, nuke it with radiation, immolate it with a torch, and run it over with a truck simultaneously, and it'll fight you with every molecule and keep its strength to the bitter end. But the GigaChat of filaments demands the GigaChat of printers. 425 degree hot end, 160 degree bed. Just dehydrating this needs a 150 degree convection oven. Needless to say, you can't print it on a PEI coated build plate, at least not twice. Once you've checked these bonkers boxes, Ultem is actually really friendly to print. Its low coefficient of thermal expansion reduces curling and allows us to capture tighter dimensions than most super polymers. Ultem 9085 is everything you want in a super polymer. Serious strength, stability, and safety while still staying straightforward to successfully squirt. In spite of the setup, this stuff's not suitable for S tier. Its print parameters are just too ridiculous. Still, I'm going to put Ultem 9085 in A tier, the highest of all the super polymers. Our final filament today does not have a boat because I don't have anything even close to being able to print this. This is thermoplastic polyamide, aka TPI, aka Kapton. That's right, the super strong yellow tape that makes spy satellites bulletproof and helps the space shuttle survive re-entry is a filament. With a glass transition temperature of nearly 250 Celsius, TPI is the most heat proof filament by a landslide. And even though its mechanical properties are about 25% lower than those of peak, TPI pulls further and further ahead as you crank up the heat. It doesn't even start weakening till it breaks 170 Celsius. But printing TPI is like impossible. 450 degrees nozzle, 220 degree plate, 240 degree chamber. That's 460 Fahrenheit. It is 30% too hot to bake cookies in there. I'm going to put TPI in F tier because any printer capable of running this effectively is going to be so expensive. You'd probably save money by just buying a whole machine shop and hiring a machinist to run it. And that is my tier list of the 40-something filaments every maker should know about. Have I convinced you to try any of these filaments for the first time? Let me know in the comments. Do you disagree with any of my opinions? Type it into Notepad and unplug your computer. These filaments were neither easy nor cheap to collect, and holy hell, you should see the wacky shit coming in the next few episodes. I'd like to thank my patrons for making episodes like this possible. I am going to reward supporters with an exclusive mini video where I name all the filaments I currently own. We're also doing monthly Q&A streams, behind the scenes mini docs, and hangouts in the Secret Lab channel of our Discord. Support me at patreon.com slash Zach Friedman and let the bonus content flow like a river. A river of content. A stream, if you will. Each video, I thank three random lab scientist supporters, and today's Fliberty Gibbets are Jennifer Patrick, Vinayaka Patrick Thompson, and The Tick. Our wonderful, wonderful collaborators. Include ZomboDB, Phil McCaffrey, The Suits Ruined Our Fun, Roxanne, Schleppy the Schwagster, Bitrot, Chuck Me Harder Baby, SXP, Microwave, The Benevolent Misanthrope, Turner's A, and Original Gridfinity Etsy, who is not endorsed by me, affiliated with me, or in any sense of the word official. I've hidden their names somewhere in this episode, and I've made them eternal parts of my 3D printing workshop. Except Original Gridfinity Etsy, I've made them a part of my Gridfinity, so now it's official. If you're still listening, you must like long lists of things. Well, you're gonna love our lab assistant supporters. Praise be to Shane Frederick, honey, what's my Patreon password? That 3D printing nerd says he needs a bigger yacht. Actually, in Colorado, we call them RVs. Scroto Sagans, Quantumly Tingled, Cameron Ogletree, Bradley Carter, Good Lady Nat Queen of Lemons, Victor of the Great Citrus Wars, Quality Doggo, Bryn Six Foot Five Figure Forlorn Wolf Shelty, Steven Six Foot Six Figure Six Pack Shelty, Juicy Legend, Drinker of Juicy Legendary Fruits, Bill Schooler, Blamo, a very threatening GMT 400, Rinry, Matthew Arrington, Stormy Design, Ad Demigod, Kevin Sumner, VK2KTJ, Cody, Land Jesus Will Die for Your Sins, Onyx Plague, and Cognito, Burn Duck 3, Paul Gibbs, Travis Pocky, Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater, Period Clots, Martin Titonium, Michael, Jiggle My Puffs, Zach Harvey, Zash, Robert Burris, Dax Dastardly, Seek Seth's Checks, Amanishi, Aaron Steers, Subscribe to the Next Layer on YouTube, seriously, some Hexadecimal, Renaud Batai, Max Luck is gonna build that lamp. 
do it. Micah Balsamic Vinegar belongs in Cocktails Friedman, Sunburnt Cat, Thunder Chicken, Amira Hume, The Monk, Granville Schmidt, Lydia K. Trump did nothing wrong, General Buck Turgidson, Kink Shaming Walrus, Michael Creamer Jr., Sorceress, MLE, Call Sign Carrot, Burn It, Craft Computing, Evan Kinney, Good Suck, Rusty Flu, Agent Maxwell, Sticks Like the River, Not the Band, Partial Eclipses of Sharp, Pucker Up, Brown Eyes, Vigeli, Travis Hippa, A Corn Doom Crew, Inc., For Sale Baby Shoes Never Worn, Colin J. Webb disputes Lee Nat's claim as Victor of Citrus Wars, Long Live Limeland, Brad Cox, Robert the Bob, Slippy Mc Tooth, Dr. Mrs. the Merman, Karanamon, not a Digimon, Elite Giant, Noby Johnson, Haley Kerman, the Cuttle Fish, Boulder Creek Yard, James, my dog's a bear, Danny Devoid of Life, DVD, VPS Data, Nami Nap, Nova Ren, Kevin DeGraff, Big Bird Tommy What Goes Bump of the Night, Cliff Henning, Michael Roche, Jason, Trans Rights, SKL, Eddie, Jamie, it's funny because Fremen poop in their still suits, Nathan Johnson, Zenforian, Cameron McPherson, Topher, John Loves Jen, Rhiannon 99, and Urch, the haunted leaky water heater upstairs, Chorns, 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 Steve's Dad, Nuclear 314, Kermit the OG Frog. Even Bluetooth has a right to repair. Visit oma3dprints.com for all your 3D printed RPG product needs. Talent Democratic Socialist and Pretty Righteous Dude Dash Sack. Timor has an unhealthy obsession with 42 millimeter sized objects. Cacophony of Failure. Iron Rain. Moonkin. Powerful CCH. Clayton Easley. Protagonist. Mike Kelly. Socks McGox. Circle Zero. I think I changed my name to Lost Dryer Socks. There are some who call me Tim. Azunda Wielder. Vian Heater of Shrink. You're gay. Bob Dobbington, yes. Probably not three raccoons in a trench coat. Spire, Varka, Viwatch, Zap, Olive Robbins, Dennis, Kempin, and Steve. Yar! He actually joined our Patreon while I was writing this part. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.